Hello everybody, Mr. Pilgrim here coming at you with the 8th video in our Platinum Trophy Guide for Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. In the last video we'd gone through the Secret Sorcery Lab right here, and then made it through the Inferno Cave right here, and fought two more bosses getting us two more trophies, one for each boss, as pretty much most of the bosses in this game will give you a trophy. Now from here we actually have obtained a new skill, the Invert skill, and we're immediately going to use that and go grab something that is very important to progressing through the game. So if you come over here to the Tower of Twin Dragons, I will show you guys where to go to get the item. So from here you're basically just going to go as if you want to fight the boss of the game. As you'll see, pretty much the weapons and stuff that we have right now are pretty much destroying everything in the area. We'll wait for the elevator to come up of course. And we'll ride it all the way down. Now you can hold down and it'll skip past any uh, elevator stops along the way as you'll see so here what you're going to want to do is simply just come out right here and invert, invert. like so you'll fall all the way down right here onto this little ledge invert. and you'll grab the ages plate now this is a very important item to grab as this will allow you to basically take no damage from spikes which is pretty important you will lose a little bit of defense on it but basically no damage from environments which is pretty nice now I'm not sure about the lava specifically but spikes and other things like traps will not do any damage to you now while we're here we're also going to grab another uh, important item and that is going to be the Valkyrie set or at least the Valkyrie dress. So what you'll do is you'll see right above us, invert. you'll basically just want to invert. Come on. Invert. There we go, finally got it. As you'll see right there. Now whenever you're not using the Aegis plate, you'll basically just want to equip this because this will give you a big boost to your defense and luck, which is pretty nice. It also does change your appearance, which is pretty cool. From here, we'll basically just go back the way we came. Okay, sure, that'll work. But for now, we're going to head back to the teleporter, and I'll show you guys what we can do with the... Um, item that we had just obtained. So now, once again, we'll take the elevator and we'll head back up to the teleporter. So from here, we're basically going to be heading all the way back to the entrance of the area, depending on however you want to do that, by all means you can. I think just going from Arventville into the first area is perfect, so I'll see you guys once we are there. Alright, so once you guys are now back here at the entrance of the castle, you're just going to want to invert whatever side you want to be on. Doesn't matter. Entirely, of course. While we're here, we might as well grab this room that's hidden and tucked away. For a free HP up. And another shortcut. So from here, make sure that you have the Aegis Plate equipped, as well as the Craftwork. 
so this will allow you to use R1 and move this right here, jump on top of it. As you'll see now, this is damage that you normally would have taken, and you can now be done with that. Inverse. And then once again, you'll want to just simply invert. Inverse. Invert again. And one last time, we are going to invert. Two more times, we're going to invert. Over here, you'll find another chest, the Crow Hat. A little bit more damage, or a little bit more defense and mind, but we're, we're perfectly fine with what we have. So from here, you're just going to want to come over to the opposite side. And here you will make it to the Oriental Sorcery Lab. Here you will find some new enemies, of course. Now depending on things, you might want to just run through the area. The simian type enemies are definitely worrisome. As well as the Haginti enemies. But coming up here, off to the right. You can actually come up into this little area off to the left and this is going to be the main path that you want to go for as you're going to be trying to figure out what is the right path to take there is a very specific path that you have to go for of course and finding it is always so much fun Now, the item I just got, the bovine plume, you want to make sure you farm one of those from the uh, enemy types, the cows, as that will allow you to get the high jump ability, which is pretty cool. As you'll see, these ninja enemies are definitely no fun at all. Like I said before, finding out the correct path in this area is also not going to be fun. Here you can find a secret room tucked away with the Kitsune Mask, which is actually a really good item. Yes, we lose out on some damage, but the defense is also really nice. So from here, it's basically just trying to figure out what takes us where. Now that we've figured that out, it's just trying to figure out which one takes us to the right spot as well. If I remember correctly, it's here. No. Is it right here? There it is. Like I said, it's, it's very tricky. Here you'll find the gear for the Crimsonite equipment. I'm going to use a high potion now, that way I don't die. 
so now from here you basically are just going to want to go back through and if I remember correctly one of these you'll have to invert and go into there it is okay Said, you'll want to farm that enemy if you can and while you're in this big room try not to set off those um, not sure what these traps are but just try not to set them off now if you run all the way to this room right here you'll have your teleport of the area and you can teleport and go make your save trust me you're going to want to do that as this area can be quite tough to navigate through as most of the enemies here deal a lot of damage and like I said you're going to want to restock so anytime you can go back to the underwater area and farm those blue chests and get your fried fish or whatever it is you want to get and you know then come back trust me it sounds like it's a waste of time but it's really not because having these uh, healing items down here is really good to have as you'll see the fried fish does a lot same for the pizza gonna hold off on the pizza because it's not easy to obtain of course but trust me really worth getting these items all right so once you guys are fully ready and equipped to come through the area you can now depending on things you can just take these enemies on one at a time basically whatever you want now also don't forget to equip the shinobi garb if you happen to get any or if you are feeling more inclined you can use the valkyrie dress it's really up to you Now, in this area, basically, you're just trying to go up. From here, you'll fight. Or run past the giant cat. I recommend trying to farm him, because he can drop a pretty cool item. So if you're feeling up for it, by all means, it'll be a lot easier if you just run to the exit and then just have to deal with the demon. Like so, as you'll see, a lot easier. just have to avoid the attack like so but I'm gonna skip to when I get the item of course like before that way you guys can see what the item is all right now I finally got the item it's called the dojikiri now depending on it it might be worse than the current weapon that you have or better it really just depends but now we can actually move on here you can find a secret wall with an MP up, which is always nice. From here, you're basically just going to want to come over here. Now, most of these enemies you can actually just run past. The cat won't hurt you directly, of course. Just be careful about any shrieking or thrown objects at you from behind. Depending, of, of course, on your RNG or luck, the 
simians here will not play nice. Here you can always find some soy sauce. Okay. But from here, we're now going to head to the final part of the area and get past all of these ninjas. If you see them squat down like so, they're doing a flame attack. It's best to try and just jump to avoid them. But here you'll have your next save. Alright, so for this fight I highly recommend just having whatever gives you the best stats overall for damage, defense, anything like that. Basically just go for what you think is best overall. Really it's just, like I said, it's entirely up to you what you want to use of course. Some things are better than others, some things are worth having and not having. But now from here, we're going to go and fight Zangetsu for the actual reel this time. This time it's almost just like an actual fight, except this time he actually does quite a bit of damage. This time whenever he does his dash attack, he actually can leave the flames that he likes to use a lot. Like I said before, whenever he does that attack, you can bait him into a direction. Be careful of the flame that comes off of it. Be careful not to stand too close to him, of course. Depending on things, you can easily take him down. He'll also switch to lightning as well. Hoping to try and do this fight without taking any damage, but oh well. Now it's all just falling apart here on me. But he'll have one more phase that he'll go between. Like I said, just trying to jump in between and bait him into attacks. Go ahead and use a high potion. The last ability he'll switch to is ice. Like I said before, you can bait him in some of these attacks. With the ice, he'll instead send a wave of ice forward whenever he attacks. 
Don't forget about the exploding shuriken that he does. But as you can see, it is pretty much a mirror match of his first encounter. But just like that, we'll have defeated him, and we inherit his sword. Basically, to do that, you'll have to come up next to him, and then you'll get these on Getsudo. Pretty cool, if I do say. It is actually a really strong weapon. It's almost equal to the uh, weapon that we currently have. I do think its attack is a little faster than normal, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of my waystones to head back to Arventville real quick. Alright, so once you're back here in Arvinville, the one thing you're actually going to want to do is come over here and craft the high jump uh, sh shard. Basically what this will allow you to do is, while you have it as you can see while using up and L1. You can then finally achieve a high jump or a much taller jump as you'll see like so, making it easier to navigate around the area. Now the first thing that you actually want to do is come all the way back over here to the Libra Ex Machina. And we can get another trophy while we are here. So first things first, you're basically just going to want to Come in and you can talk to OD again and he should have some new books for us to check out. Or not, okay. Be certain to return. Oh well. Now from here, if you actually just come down here. Come over here. Right here you can just do that at least 10 times and you will get a chest to spawn. Or do this until you get the chest to spawn. As you'll see, you'll get the nose glasses item, as you'll see right here. Pretty funny item. But upon doing so, you will also get a trophy related to it as well. So now what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to go and fight Giebel and actually go for the good ending of the game. So from here you're just going to go back to the Hall of Termination. Pretty easy. Now you shouldn't need to save for this, but if you feel like you might have need to, then by all means go for it. And now while we're also here, we can also finally head up here and grab the legendary equipment which is pretty nice and then we will be able to finally fight Giebel and save him all right once you are ready you'll enter you'll do the fight like normal of course Basically, you want to do this fight until the moon turns red like so. If you've done it properly, you will then save Giebel. There'll be a cutscene and things like that. Pretty easy, as I do say so. 
Sadly, Giebel doesn't turn good, but you now can get the true ending of the game. Pretty easy. So from here, I'm going to show you guys where and how to get the to the actual next area, of course, before anything else. So if you come back to the Garden of Silence, you can then head to the area with the red moon as I mentioned in the very first video. Pretty crazy, it's looping all the way back around. But as you can see, having the high jump makes navigating a whole lot easier in some regards. As you'll see, it definitely is a whole lot easier. So here, as you'll see, the red moon, same as the evil fight. Curse you. And that will allow us to enter the next area of the game. However, I'm going to stop the video right here, just because I want to have that be its whole video in itself, as there is a total of I think three or so bosses overall for that area of the game. But overall, I do think that this video has been pretty helpful and informative, as well as showing you guys how to get through the Oriental Sorcery Lab. It is definitely not the easiest task, of course. I do also highly recommend having plenty of stock items and healing as well. Now, do note that while you have the ability, I would highly recommend going and full clearing the rest of the map or getting as much as you can done, trying to grab as many of the chests as you can, as that will help you out in the long run as well. Like I said, it's entirely up to you when you would like to do that, of course, or if you want to just straight follow these guides. But as always, I do hope that these guides have been informative and helpful in any way shape or form as always this has been mr pilgrim and i'll see you in the next video